Hello there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I'm going to run through a tutorial in Dynamo in Autodesk Revit that covers how to automatically set up sets of floor plans um, with prefixes and suffixes. Uh, so view creation using Dynamo. And this is a part of a, a bigger workflow that I'll cover in a few sessions. So we're going to look at the first part today, which is creating floor plan sets. We're going to look at creating sheets and then placing those views on sheets automatically using Dynamo as well in later sessions. Um, so in brief, what we'll be covering is creating a script which will create levels, which, which will create floor plans of certain types for all levels in a model um, based on the level type that you pick. Then it will apply view templates, which will sort the views. It'll apply a scope box, prefixes and suffixes to the view naming, and we'll make it work in Dynamo Player. And then there's an alternative workflow in a non-Dynamo program that I can show you as well. And there's no custom nodes required. So it's a nice and easy script, um, an easy one to roll out in your office that should work quite well. So without further ado, um, we'll actually go and set up the script. So I'll actually, I'll run through the script from start to finish today so that you can follow along. So in, in essence, I've basically set up a model. Um, it's a very basic model, 10 floors, just a very generic design, just to make it obvious that these floor plans are, are different. Um, I've set up one scope box that we can apply to them all. And I set up a few view templates uh, for different view series. So I've got a journal arrangement, concrete set out, finishes, wall set out, and signage series. Um, and they're all being basically told to be sorted based on two parameters. So I've got these two project parameters that I've added. And basically if I create a view and apply a template to that view, um, using Dynamo in this case, it will automatically know where it belongs in my view browser. So that's how that will sort itself. But we'll actually jump into Dynamo now and we'll start off the script. So the first thing we're going to need to do in the script is identify which levels we want to use to generate our floor plans, because you may not want to create a floor plan for every level in your project. Maybe you've got a type of level that you're applying to your documentation based levels, but you may have some control levels such as canopy spring points. So what we'll do is we'll start with a category by name and we'll get the name of the category for levels and feed that in because ultimately we're going to be get getting to this node uh, floor plan by level so this is our destination node where we feed in a level and it generates us a floor plan and we can set parameters of that floor plan from there so we're going to take that that level we're going to go to manual mode just so we're not overloading our, our scripts um, so at this point we have the category of levels but now we want to get all elements of category uh, which sometimes can be fun to find. There we go. So if I ran this at the moment, I'd forget all my levels in my project. I'm gonna do a get parameter by name, and we're gonna get the type of the level. So if I do that, and then I get a string for type. Sorry, it will be case sensitive, so that matters. Check that off to the side. So that should give us the type of each level. So you can see that they're all the same in this case, but let's say I had a level that was there for working purposes and I didn't want to actually generate a floor plan for this level. So I'll just create an extra one and we'll just make it a different level type called uh, working. So if I rerun this script, let's we'll see, I've got this other one called working. So what we want to do is actually take off the front characters from that converted to a string. So we want to convert that string to an object, or string from object, sorry. We're going to take this, convert it to text, and we're going to take some characters off the front. So we're going to take the first seven characters off. So we'll make a code block and we'll just go zero, seven, just to get two parameters that we can use. So we want to start at index zero and we want to take the first seven off. And that will leave us with the name of each respective level. And at this point, we can set up a filter. So this would be, I guess, one of our inputs in Dynamo Player that we're gonna use. So really what we're gonna do is push all this stuff down, including string from object. And we're gonna take another string, and this will be our first input in Dynamo Player. So what is the level type that we're looking for? I think it was eight millimeter head in this case, yep. Yeah. So this would be an input, so you tell it to be an input at this point. So we want to set up a, a true false check. Um, does it equal our check? So is this equal to that? We'll just make sure it's always lacing to longest so that it checks every single one. 
And this will basically enable us to tell which ones don't meet the criteria. And what we can do now is do a, a Boolean mask over our list. Um, filter by Boolean mask. And we'll filter our levels based on this mask. And what that, that node does is it breaks down our list into two sets. It breaks into the, the trues and the falses. So this is where we can tell all the levels that we care about to proceed in this case. So this would ultimately be the point where we would feed this in to create floor plan views. Um, before I do that, I'm going to add another parameter just so that we can see some control coming over the script before we just go and generate a, a basic set of floor plans. So we're actually going to want to set the names of those levels as well. So the way we can do that, I'll just quickly save this to my demo. I'll just make another one. Okay. So the way we can do that is we'll get the level name. So level name is actually a special node um, out of the box. And we'll take those levels, get their names. So you'll see that's their name property, and this is a string. And then we want to take a prefix. So we'll get a string, and this again will be an input. So this is our prefix. And let's just say our prefix is, we're going to do some general arrangement first. So we'll do 10 underscore as our prefix. And you can actually use the plus node to join strings. So we'll say prefix plus this, and then we'll lace it to be longest so that it applies over the whole list. Auto will know to do that anyway, but I prefer sometimes to force the lacing of my lists just to be safe. And what we want to do from there is add a suffix. So we'll do the opposite. So we'll say then the result of that plus a suffix. In this case, we'll just say GA plan. And that will also be an input. So you'll see at this point, this will give us a list of names with prefixes and suffixes added to them. And then we can do a set parameter by name. Quite hard to show up. There we go. So we're going to want to take all those floor plans that we're about to generate, and we're immediately going to set their their view name property to this alternative name. So we'll take that parameter name and we'll hook this up. So this is basically going to rename them as soon as they're created. At this point, I'll unfreeze the create level node and we'll just do it. We'll just run the script once off to show you how this would work as it is. So if I run this script, it will create a fresh set of levels with those names applied to them for each respective level that that would belong to. So already we can see that we've created like a relatively useful script to automatically create views very quickly. However, it's not good enough. We needed to do more. So we're going to just refresh the script. Usually when you're working with creating elements in Dynamo, it's good to open the script again if you've just created some elements so that the session forgets those elements as references because um, it can hold on to those if you're not careful. So we want to set a few other parameters now as well. So we want to set some view template parameters as well. So we're going to set view template. And then we're going to set that to an actual view template that we nominate. So we're going to take the view templates node in this case, which is a dropdown that actively sources our model. Again, this will be an input. And we will connect this up as a value here. And likewise, that will be applied to all all our views, and we can make sure that that's always laced longest as well, so that it applies to every single one. So now if we ran this script again, it'll do the same thing, but instead it will also apply the view template to each of those views, which will automatically sort it into the right section of our view browser at the same time. So now we can see that the script is getting smarter. Um, but the last thing we need to do is actually apply scope boxes to uh, those views, because uh, at the moment they wouldn't be very good to place on a, a sheet potentially, because the model might have a lot of elements outside the extent. So what I've done here is I've set up a set or a scope box around just the, the bottom few levels, scope box one. Now, unfortunately, scope boxes can't be applied the same way as parameters. You can't just say set scope box to a string. You have to actually get that scope box first. So what we're gonna do is go back and we're just going to freeze down our level creation nodes so that we're not creating elements. And we're going to take the same the same logic as getting all levels, but instead we're going to get all scope boxes. 
So if I ran that, you'll see that it gets us all the scope boxes as elements instead. Um, so we could feed that in as a parameter now, but imagine if you had more than one scope box, say we just had two, three, four. Uh, so obviously we would want to use a specific one out of that list. So similarly to how we dealt with the other uh, filter by Boolean mask as well, we're going to get the name of each scope box, element name. There we are. And now you'll see that we can check each name of those scope boxes. And likewise, we can set up a string as an input where we can type in the scope box that we want to source. And this would give us the option to isolate that element. So we'll just say, does this equal that? And we'll lace it to be the longest again. So if we run that, you see we'll get another true false mask which will allow us to isolate using a filter by boolean mask however we will disconnect those and we'll mask the list of elements back here prior to getting their name and if we run that again you'll see that this will let us isolate this element that we can then apply as a parameter so over here we'll take another one of these And now we will say scope box. For the parameter name, the value will be this one over here. And the element is the floor plan by level. So if I save this, and I believe I can probably just run it now, yes. So if I run this, I might just refresh. Oh, actually, I've got the floor plan node still frozen down, of course. Okay, so now if I run this, It'll give us a, a set of floor plans with a prefix and a suffix. And it's also applied the view template. And as well as that, to each one of them, it will have applied a scope box. So you can see that it's locked on scope box one. So this is essentially a set of plans that we could work with uh, quite easily. So I'm just going to jump ahead a step to one that I sort of made earlier um, that I've advanced with some sorting and grouping and tidying up. But essentially, it's the same, the same thing you've just seen me put together. I like to group my inputs in um, groups in Dynamo. If you ever want to know how to group nodes in Dynamo, I'll just ungroup these. So if you right click a set of nodes and go create group, it creates this group where you can right click and change the color. And you can double click here to add the title, um, such as set view name. And I just do this to make the script a bit more organized. Um, so that's quite helpful. Um, and there you can see the prefix and the suffix down here. So if I close this, we'll run this through Dynamo Player instead, um, just to show you how quick it can be to set up a set of floor plans. So I'll just save this file. So at the moment you see we have no sheets set up. So we'll just go manage Dynamo Player. So home one, we'll go to home one's properties. And this will essentially give us a script that we can keep running to create multiple sets of views. Um, so quite powerful. Um, so if we just wait for these properties to boot up, it should be here soon. Uh, there we go. So we can basically pick our view template one at a time. Um, we type in our level head, keep that constant. So I can say my prefix is 10 underscore. And we can just not put a suffix on if we want. If you omit this, it just doesn't put anything on basically. So if I run that you'll see that this will set up our GAs. Typically I found once this runs once, it's faster each time. Seems like there's just a bit of work in booting up the script sometimes. Cool, and then we'll do our concrete setouts. And I'll just expand this just so you can see them getting created as well. There we go. So you can pretty much see what's happening now. Um, it's, it's very powerful and you, you could actually build the script to take pieces of the view template name and literally use those as your prefix and suffix so you, that you don't even have to worry about nominating those yourself. If your view templates can be named in such a way, um, that, that is an option as well where you can really get a lot of value out of just pressing a few buttons. Um, you could press it to, to actually run a multiple sets of series at the same time um, if you had a standard set up for documentation in your office. You could just have a set up a documentation set node um, that you press play on 
But there you go, so that, that's a very quick and easy workflow and quite a simple script as well. Um, I thought I'd show you an alternative workflow that you can use as well. I've used this one before I knew how to use Dynamo. Um, so sometimes this isn't too bad of a workflow. So basically this one relies on you sort of setting up view types first. So saying you have like a 10 GA view type and then you have general arrangement template applied to it by default. Um, likewise, for all your other series, you'd make similarly another automatic setup. So you'd say all your twirls have a concrete set out. Sorry, concrete. And I'll stop there just because I think you get the gist. So what you would do from there is you create view sets using your plan views tool, picking your view types, and you'd make a whole bunch at once. And then from there, you could make another set of concrete. And there you go. So you can see that they're, they're set up. Obviously the naming's not quite there, but what you could do from there to apply a scope box is shift select them, take out your headers, scroll down and set scope box one. And that would set the a common scope box to all those plans. Um, it may take a little while just because, oh no, there we go, it was quite quick. Sometimes that can take a while. Um, from there, what I would do is create a view list. So, sorry, schedules view list. And we're going to do a filter so that we only get the, the views that we care about. We'll take sorting one, sorting two, and view name. Uh, we'll filter that sorting one must equal sheet views. And we'll just sort by sorting two and then view name. And we'll keep itemize on. Okay, so at the moment we've got basically a schedule that shows this, then the series, and then the view name. Um, so you could use a tool such as BIM Link at this point, which is quite a popular tool, um, but it costs money, it's a license-based program. I found a tool from BIM 1 called Export Import Excel, which has uh, the same functionality, just a little bit more limited. But if we click on this, basically the way the tool works is you pick a schedule that you want to export, where you want to export it to. Um, you can put a prefix on it. And we'll just export. Okay, and we'll navigate to where that was located. Desktop, BIM 1, demo model. And you could actually here manually set your view name, basically. So we could do something like this. So we could say, find all of these, get rid of, uh, it's a protected sheet. That's, that's the challenge with this workflow. I remember usually you want to go to an, a fresh file and do all your view processing there. And then you can actually start hunting this stuff down in Excel. And from there, you'd need to add a prefix or a suffix. So we could say uh, something like that. But you can see that it's not the it's not the quickest workflow. Probably didn't sort my my browser as well as I could have. And we use concatenate, and we'll just drag those cells down to auto populate, and we'll copy this data, and we'll take this back to our our protected table as values. And ultimately, this is I guess what we would return. So we'd save this data, and we'll just close down Excel. I don't want to change to book one. Okay. So we'll go back to the import tab in BIM 1 Excel and we will go and find that data. Demo model, we'll apply it to view list. Import, would you like to rename? No, successful. And there you are. You can see that that's another way to sort of rename your, your views, but obviously it's a little bit slower and it relies on whoever's working with the tool to understand a common workflow that you'd apply um, to that process. Um, so that's pretty much the first step of this. This um, So that's just the Dynamo free workflow that I just described. So next time we're gonna look at how to create sheets using Dynamo automatically um, using Excel. Uh, quite a simple tutorial, but a good way to understand using Dynamo and Excel. Um, and thanks for tuning on in this session today. It was a really quick one, but hopefully it helps you in setting up some of your documentation. Obviously there's a lots of other ways you could apply this technique to setting up things like elevation, sections, 3D views, etc. This is only for floor plans. Um, so yeah, use your creativity. Um, and if you've got any questions or queries, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. 
And feel free to follow and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Um, thanks. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.